Now with WordPress powering over 40% of the entire internet, it is a playground for people trying to hack and access yours or your clients' websites. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at a range of different ways we can make that just a little bit harder and in combination with each other should give you a lot more peace of mind for your website. For your website. So the first way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take a look at what's called two-factor authentication. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So normally when you try to access your WordPress website, you'll go to your admin and you'll type in your email address or your username and your password and you'll gain access if they're correct. With two-factor authentication, we can make that a little bit more secure. In this example, I'm showing you, if I go ahead and log in, you see this now asks me for an authentication code. This is now going to get emailed to me and I'll have a random string of numbers or letters and numbers in combination that I have to have before I can actually go ahead and access my account. So now if I try to access this without putting that code in, it'll give me an error. However, as long as I've got the code and click login, I'll get access to my website. But if I put the wrong code in or I don't have that code, I can't actually access my website. So there's a nice little extra level of security. Let me show you how you can easily add this to your website. Now there's a range of different ways you could do this. You could use a plugin dedicated to two-factor authentication. There are a range of great free options available to you. All you need to do is do a quick search for two-factor authentication and you'll see we have a range of different plugins. You also find some security plugins will have this as part of the overall tool set. It's up to you how you want to move forward. For me, I prefer to use an entire security suite. I'll take a look at that a little later, but let me just show you how easy it is to go ahead and set this up. Now I use iTheme security for my particular security plugin, and you'll find that when you go ahead and you run through the little setup wizard, one of the options that asks you is, do you want to enable two-factor authentication? As you can see, I've set that up inside you. So now, whenever I've got any user account, my own or anybody else's, I can apply two-factor authentication to it and choose what kind of authentication I want to use. So for example, if we come over to my own profile, and we scroll right the way down, you'll see inside there, I've got three options with this particular plugin for how I want to handle that two-factor authentication. I've enabled in this example, the email authentication and made that primary. And now whenever I try to log in, it'll ask me for that security code, which will be emailed to my registered email address. So it gives us an extra level of security. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now the next option you may want to take a look at is a little bit more to do with your entire computer as opposed to just your individual website. And that's to use something like a password manager. There are a range of great options available. One of those is NordPass. And as you can see, it starts at as little as £1.19 per month. And this allows you to easily generate passwords, save passwords, store passwords, and have a master password key that when you use that, you're gonna access your passwords. Without it, nobody else can find them. This adds just an extra layer of security onto your entire computer, which can be a very, very useful thing to add in to your overall workflow. So maybe take a look at using something like NordPass or any of the other kind of password manager options out that are out there, like 1Password and so on. Even the built-in features inside your operating system may be enough to give you that extra level of security. Now, next on our list is handling plugins. There are over 50,000 plugins available on the WordPress repository alone. And that's an awful lot of plugins. And you can do a little bit of due diligence before you install things onto your WordPress website to reduce that risk of having hacking potential or problems further on down the line. You wanna make sure, first of all, they come from a reputable source. You can check things out by taking a look at the plugin section going into more details, and you can do a little bit of simple digging around. First of all, you wanna make sure that any plugin you install has been tested with the current version of WordPress to make sure there's no incompatibilities and therefore security issues. But also you can go and take a look at some of the other things. For example, how recently was it updated? You wanna make sure that any plugin is maintained and is up to date. So you can see this was updated six days ago. It tells you what version of WordPress, but also tells you what it's compatible with, the number of active installations. So if you've got a lot of active installs with a regularly updated plugin from a reputable source with a good average rating of reviews, you're onto a good starting point. And this is where you wanna start your kind of digging. Next up, you might wanna check out their Facebook groups if they have one and any kind of forums they may have for any kind of technical support. You can get a good feel for whether a plugin is going to be a good sort of source for you by doing a little bit of digging around. 
Next up is making sure that any plugins or themes are up to date. Now you'll find that WordPress updates quite regularly and therefore so do plugins. And you need to make sure that you're on top of your game and keeping up to date with all those updates. So for example, when you log into your dashboard of WordPress, you'll see it'll tell you how many updates you have available. You can see at this point, I've only got a translations update, but any plugins or theme updates will be listed inside here for you. So just take a couple of minutes every day to log in and check things out. And if you manage in lots of different sites, you may want to check out something like Main WP that allows you to manage, monitor, and maintain those websites from one single location, including handling updates, backups, and all manner of other good things. I've got a video that I'll link in the description and in the corner right now, so you can take a look at how you can set that up for yourself, some of the benefits. Totally free to do and really does give you peace of mind having one location. But make sure your plugins, your themes, and any translations and the WordPress core itself is always updated. But before you do, please do make sure you take a backup. Again, a link of video in the description to show you how easy it is to make backups, again, for totally zero cost whatsoever. Check that video out, link down below. Now, next on our list is user management. Now, if you have a website where you are the only person that has access to it, there's not so much of a worry. But if you have a website that has multiple users, for example, you may have a client's website that you give access to the client. They may have an admin role. They may have a different level of use. They may give access to other people. You may have multiple users, or you may have a website that's open to anybody to sign up. Making sure that you don't have lots of users that really don't need to be there is good housekeeping. So for example, if you come into the users section and all users, this will list out all of the users for your website. So let's say for example, you've built a site for a client, you've handed it off, they've sold the business and they no longer need to have access because that's been passed to someone else. It makes sense to go ahead and delete them because their email address could get hacked. There's all different ways in which that password could be used and used against the website. So if they're not needed, delete them and make sure you can see if they've got any posts associated with them, simply assign that to someone else. So for example, if we go ahead and delete this particular one, we click on delete. It'll ask you, do you want to delete all the content associated with them? If that's applicable, please do. Otherwise you can attribute all the content to someone else. We can choose them from the list and then we can say confirm deletion and then any posts or content they've created will now be associated with that other user. Their account will be deleted, including any password, login information and everything else to go with it. Just another little simple tip to make sure that everything is as secure as it possibly can be. Next on our list is a security plugin. Now there are lots available, some free, some have pro, some have both. I personally use iTheme security, but you've got other options like WordFence and so on. Now what these are gonna do is they're gonna install into your WordPress website. You'll generally run through some kind of wizard, a setup process, and then you'll have basic security in place. And even basic security is better than no security. So as you saw a little earlier, if we come into the settings, for example, for iTheme security, you can see I've got a lot of different options enabled. This is all done through a simple setup wizard that'll guide you through step by step. So if you're not technically that comfortable, this is still pretty simple to set up. But you'll see we've got some really important things inside you. Things like banning users. So if you have an IP address, an address that's trying to access your website repeatedly, you can block it and that'll stop that problem happening. But you also have things inside most security plugins that will monitor for anybody that's trying to access things like the admin username, which is the kind of default, which you really don't want to be using when you set up WordPress, but also many different ways of doing things. This will then block them, which will reduce the, the potential for having your website hacked. Things like enforcing SSL. So any pages that may not have that security applied, this will push them over and stop anybody accessing those insecure pages. You can see there's lots of different options inside you. All of these are geared towards stopping your website being hacked, including the two-factor authentication we saw a little earlier. So making sure you've got something like iTheme security installed and set up on your website in conjunction with all these other things we're talking about in this video should give you a much more secure website. Final on our list is keeping up to date with WordPress security and security related information. For example, sign up to something like Patch Stack. You can have a totally free weekly email and that will send you an email out with any security vulnerabilities and what's being done with them, what version had the vulnerability and what version has had it updated. This will just give you the ability to quickly scan through, see if you've got any plugins that you have on your website and then you can make a plan to make sure that it's updated or you remove them if there's a potential problem that has 
hasn't been fixed or rectified. And those are the seven reasons or the seven ways in which I recommend you help secure your WordPress website and make it more difficult for hackers to get access and cause all manner of problems. As always, though, all applicable links for everything I've talked about is in the description down below. And I welcome your comments and your questions in the comment section. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. Thank you.